Hi, and welcome to the second episode of The Cabinet Con. I'm your host, Kyle O'Donnell. This episode is called Micah's Marauder. Today is Tuesday, March 22nd, 2022. Our next episode will air on Tuesday, March 29th, 2022. To skip this disclaimer, quiz, intro, shout outs, and all that other stuff, skip forward to about two minutes and 50 seconds. The winner of last week's quiz was Mike from Scranton, Pennsylvania. I sent that splendid chap a free copy of the latest film, and his review made me melt just a little bit. He was as shocked as I was about the nuclear level civil rights abuses and police corruption that befell that tiny desert town. And you will be too when you get your access to my official director's cut of the film. Get your instant access of that sneak preview at LegallyInsaneFilms.com, then click Films. Trust me, if you dislike small town injustice enough to listen to this show, that film will rock your world. For this week's quiz, you can find the questions at either of my Twitter feeds, either at Kyle O'Donnell or at Justice underscore pod. Send your answers to thejusticepod at gmail. Here are the questions. In this episode, Micah says this wasn't Robert Stoll's first scam. In fact, he worked for a car dealership and stole customers' down payments. What was the name of that dealership? Question B. When Micah describes Stoll's swagger walking into court, what joke did I make about The Hobbit? Question C. In this episode, I cover Robert Stoll's background check. What year was his first brush with the courts? Again, find all these questions on my Twitter account at Kyle O'Donnell. Email your answers to thejusticepod at gmail. Your answers must be complete, correct, and sent in before next week's episode. If you can do that, I'll give you a code to access my latest documentary for free. Last week, you guys made your voices heard. You voted that you wanted me to interview other victims, other cabinet companies, and even the attorneys. It warms my heart that you want all three, and it warms my heart for two reasons, actually. Not only do you find this investigation interesting enough that you want me to dive further in, that really does help me find validation in this show, uh, but you also must have hearts of gold. The votes came in swift, so I went ahead and got to work on those interviews. Turns out that while Micah's story is gut-wrenching, other victims had it even worse. I won't reveal too much, but you can trust me when I say that if you feel sorry for her, you're going to need a box of Kleenexes for the next interviews. On the last episode, we heard Micah reveal a twist in our plot. And looking at it from having already interviewed these beautiful souls, I can confidently say that we were onto some really interesting, if accurate, assumptions about this new character in the plot. I'm just going to give you a pointer here going forward. The name Michael McKay is going to become more and more important as time goes on. Mark my words and keep that one on the uh, front of your mind. And now, on to the show. Okay, so in the last episode, we were just getting to the end of when Micah had been waiting for uh, Robert Stoll to get back with her after he, uh, she'd found out that he abandoned his false storefront. And uh, that went a little something like this. So, um, I'm, just, I'm just wondering, because... Did you go to the police? Is there something that like, because he stole from you, right? So was there like a police report file before you went to civil court? Yes, we did. We felt, well, I mean, we, we went to the sheriff's department. We did file a, a police report and they said it's a, it's a um, small claims case. Okay. So they sent you to civil court. Okay. Yep. Mm-hmm. yep. So, you know, every time and it expires every 30 days. So every time we don't get him served, we have to reapply. And that's a pain in the neck. Mm-hmm. Um, you, have to go to the, you have to go to the sheriff's office, and then you have to go to the courthouse, and it's back and forth. It is terrible. Um, and then the process server, it's it's, it's terrible. Process. It's like a full time job to try and get your money back. You know, and, and Sean's trying to work, and I'm working. You know, it was just a nightmare. It was really a nightmare to try to, you know, and I'm thinking, no wonder people give up. Right. No one has time or money. Yeah, I wanted to give up, and and but I didn't want to give up at all. I'm like, no, I'm doing this thing. I don't care how much it costs. I don't care if it costs more than what we paid. I'm doing it <laughs> because I, I you were paid. determined. No, yeah, I get it. It's not really just about the money, but you just can't go around <clears throat> doing this kind of stuff. I mean, it's just not right. Like now it's June, and I'm still looking for you know to figure out where he's gone. Can't find him. He's just gone. And I was driving again. And I see like a little small strip of offices and um, it had a sign on the door. So I pull up in the parking lot, to check it out. And it was an eviction notice, <laughs> and, but it, st- it still said cabinets, it was little flags. It was eviction notice. And this lady came out of the office at the end of the building. She said, if you're looking for him, he's gone. 
She said, everyone else is looking for him too. And uh, <laughs> I said, I said uh, do you mind if I come in and talk? And she said, she said, no, no come on in. And uh, she said, her name was Renee. And, and as she was talking, and I'm telling her about Robert, uh, she said, no, she said, this guy's not, name's not Robert. She said, his name is Michael. And uh, she said, he stopped paying rent. Um, but she said, lots of other people were looking for him. She said, he was selling cabinets. She said, he had a big truck that said cabinet outlet on it. <laughs> and he said, he was going to take it to Panama City after Hurricane Michael and set it up like a mobile kitchen and sell cabinets to people who had their houses messed up. Oh, Jeez. good lord. So <laughs> then she showed me a card of uh, this man named David who was with the Department of Agriculture, and she said she was told to call him if she had any more information. And then she showed me a picture of this guy, Michael, his driver's license. And um, so when I get home, I look up Pensacola Cabinet Outlet, and the logo is the same as the logo that was parked uh, on the truck, you know, on the truck <laughs> parked at Robert's trailer. And so I looked up reviews on the Better Business Bureau and it was from 2018. And one of the reviews was of course bad. And the reviews mentioned Robert. So Robert and Michael were scanning people together all this time. And so, but and they so, are, they this are is, two different people. <clears throat> They're two different people. Yeah, and this is where the story shifts gears, as I understand it. When, when we're when we're looking at Robert, Robert is localized in Pensacola, scamming, you know, whomever about, uh, you know, the people that want their cabinets. I, I, I kind of my heart sank a little bit and I was just kind of shocked that I didn't, I didn't hear this last time we talked about how now Michael, this guy, you know, sees hurricanes and such things like that as, as even, an opportunity. Right. Right. Like that's gross. But, yeah. but why wouldn't he like, he's already a douchebag, right? <laughs> I mean, that that's, that's how these people think, right? Yeah. That, that's like they double don't look at, bag. <laughs> yeah. I mean, there's a special circle of hell, I'm sure, for people who, right. who you know, like, scam scam folks on the regular, but then look at um, natural disasters as another opportunity. They're like, oh, my God, that's right. probably, they're probably in such chaos, but down there, they'll never catch us. I mean, like, we think of it like, how do we help these people? They're thinking of it like, ooh, look, money. they're going to get the last oh. amount of money that they've got in their bank account, probably. Yeah, after, they know after insurance just... companies are paying them, giving them checks, and they know that money is there. Or or they're not, and they've just got the one last little bit of money in their in the, like in their savings account or something, and they're like, yeah. they're totally motivated to fix their houses. Let's go, let's go snag that last bit of, bit of cash. Yeah, and they're yeah. going to use that van as a mobile kitchen they're going to drive down there and they're going to they're going to hit them twice, you know? So now we hit them all down. So now we got this character Michael. His last name Micah is McKay, is that right? McKay, Michael McKay. Now tell us about how this changes gears on the story a little bit. Uh, because as 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 I understand it, when I look through this stuff, there's there's underlings. And I think that you guys got one of the little fish. Right, I think what what you guys got was one of these like, I guess foot soldiers. They actually learn the scam from somebody else, and the reason that I'm saying this is because I have a little bit of you know foreknowledge of this. Michael McKay has been indicted. I'm just going to jump forward on that one and say he's been indicted. However, I emailed Michael's last known email address cab outlets at yahoo or whatever i can't remember what it, I'll, I'll, I'll publish it on the video version of this episode which by the way if you're not watching the video episode of this version head over to youtube.com uh slash kyle o'donnell subscribe to that channel and uh, and uh and get the video version of this uh there's also the fan club that you can get the the full length videos um as well but but getting back to michael he i i emailed his actual um, 
email address that you that actually I'm not sure, I'm not even sure that you gave it to me. I went and actually found lots of stuff and they responded. Not only did they respond, okay, I sent them an email from an old account that I had. It wasn't, it was my actual account, but it actually gave my name. I thought it was some other name and I, I boned that one up, but I signed it a different name and they immediately got back to me and they were like, is it Kyle? Is it O'Donnell? Is it, you know, your nickname? What? Uh, we're confused. Who are we talking to? And, <laughs> and so, I, I knew immediately these people were still paranoid, probably twice as paranoid since probably what this email would have amounted to was them getting that last little bit of money before this guy sent away to wow. jail. Uh, and my I'm surprised that they responded to a business email because it was from the cabinets. You know what I mean? I'm surprised they responded at all after he he's been indicted. You know what I mean? Well, Robert was. And and was so so Michael and Robert were using that same email or was that just um, Michael? I well the the cab outlet I believe may have just been Michael. Okay. Well, I don't know. In either case, just just to just to make bring the the audience up to speed, Michael has been indicted for the same type of fraudulent was it uh, fraudulent activity, the same or similar fraudulent activities uh -huh. as Robert Stoll. And so he's he's going to be arraigned. We'll we'll get into all that. I don't want to give too much away because Mike has got a good story about that, but um so he's 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 already been charged, brought up on charges, and he's still trying to get money through these scams as proven by that email. And one of the other right. segments to the show that I was going to make sure we do was we actually call these guys and we get a voice signature. Have you ever talked to Michael McKay? No. No? So you wouldn't know like how to identify his voice or anything? No. Okay. Well, we'll call him on the show. We'll, we'll record it and we'll see what they say. We'll, we'll, we'll go forward and give them a, a phone number to call. And then I'll have, because Deb is in the middle of her kitchen nightmare, I'll have her walk through that. You know, Deb, you should talk to this guy. Seriously, just like you would, you would be talking to a guy who... Uh, That's not a problem at all. Because to be quite honest with you, every single thing that has happened to this house, I have been the one in charge of getting the contractor right. and getting this and getting cool. that. Well, yeah. She, you know. At the end of the conversation though, I want to do like a dead ringer, right? I like I really want to pin this guy down. What I want to do if if we're actually talking to Michael, if we confirm that it's Michael, right? Mm -hmm. I want you at the end of that conversation to say, "And so, I just want to make sure um I I just heard rumblings of, of maybe a court case, maybe you were indicted or blah blah blah. I, I mean, I'm dying to get that reaction. So maybe he hangs up. Maybe he uh, gets a little squeamish. Maybe I, who knows, right? I kind of want to call. I also want to call Robert Stoll, who's currently in jail, right? Right. <laughs> he admitted to it. So like, what's there's there's no, there's no he can't be double indicted. He can't be charged again. He can be charged again for other crimes, of course, while he's in jail. However, um, and if I were his lawyer, I'd advise him not to talk. But, I mean, <laughs> this guy doesn't seem to be sharpest tool in the shed. So maybe what he'll do is talk. Maybe he'll decline the call. I don't know. But I want to call him, too, and get that as part of this segment. So The interesting, the interesting thing is um, Michael McKay was listed as a witness on Robert's case. You mean, I don't know. you mean by the defense? By the defense. Well, okay. So That's interesting. I don't know what he has to do with it. If he had, you know, <clears throat> you know, if that, if that got him off the hook or if he, I, I'm not sure what part that played in that. Is, but, is Michael McKay a Florida resident also? Yes, but he has his address. Um, he has addresses in Ohio as well. Um, so his history of scamming people also goes back to Ohio. Yeah. Um, yeah. Let's talk about that real quick. I think that's a very interesting part of this. Now, before McKay came to Florida, um, talk about 
the the I don't know carnage, <laughs> the fallout that he left behind in in Ohio. Well, from and this is this is not um, I haven't done as much research on on Michael because this is a little confusing, um, but it appears that he um, had a couple businesses that um, were maybe investing. Um, that I'm not, I'm not quite sure, but I know he, that he had, um, he had some cases in Ohio, um, where he had, uh, taken money from people and, um, I believe had judgments against him, um, in Ohio as well. So he does have a history in Ohio of, of scamming people as well. But he hasn't done, he hasn't been you know, hasn't gone to court, hasn't gone to jail or anything for any of the stuff that happened in Ohio? Um, I know he's been arrested. I'm not sure if he did jail time, you know, did jail time for it or if he, you know, did restitution. Was the arrest for this cabinet thing or was it like an arrest from... It wasn't for cabinets, but it was for, um, it was for a different business. I mean, he had business business names he seems like the mastermind he seems like he used robert like a little puppet it was weird that they found each other somehow because if robert is living in squander and this guy's got businesses all over including out of state it's almost like he was just using him and i know that michael also had a business or tried to have a business called Grumpy Monkey uh, <laughs> Cabinet Company. Um, I wonder if that was his nickname in prison. <laughs> and also, um, Robert, I mean, uh, Michael also has a, a new, a new business um, that he's created as well. Again, of, of around cabinets. Yes. And it is called Wholesale Cabinet Group that was just created in April of 2021. In, in, in Florida. Florida? In Pensacola? In Florida. in Florida, yes. Wow. So he's still... He's still, he's still at, chugging away, yup. Okay, so so let's, let's fast forward to the part where yeah. Michael has been indicted. Tell me about that. Oh, you mean Robert? No, Robert's Robert's in jail right now, right? Robert is in jail. So, okay, well, we didn't really cover that. Let's let's cover that and then let's move on to Michael. Okay. Robert, um I contacted as many people as I could find from the reviews online. Mm -hmm. I messaged them on Facebook, I emailed them, I called them, and then I got in contact with um Daniel Shaw with the Department of Agriculture, gave them as much information as I had. Um and I'm not I wasn't sure what information he had also. And, and, and you um, told me you were kind of confused about what role the Department of Ag had in this. Did you Have you found that out? Um, he, he also, um, just a second. So he was um, the Department of Agriculture and Consumer Services. And I know that they can do more like, um, I think he can like cross state lines. I think he has... I think he has because it's federal i think so yeah um yeah i have yet i have yet to call this guy I'll, I'll call and find out his role in that and kind of get that explanation i just i didn't know if you had found that out uh -huh. um yeah he had a big part in that um yeah he had a big part in that um so also um you know when i was doing searches on Facebook for cabinets, I found ads from Michael McKay, his girlfriend, Sierra Dozier, his, her brother, Damon Dozier, who also worked for Robert, Robert Stoll, Richard Stoll, his brother. And then, um, this guy named Casey, AC, um, who works yeah. at right Flooring, where Robert used to work and where the, Richard Stoll The letters K C, right? Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I remember that from the images. Yeah. And I don't, I don't know where he's a, a bird. I'm not sure where he's from. He's born. Um, so on 9, 10, 2019, I get a message from a friend of mine who works at the courthouse. And she said, she just texted me and said, Robert's in jail. Um, so I called Sean, told him to run down to the sheriff's department, file the paperwork again to get the summons. Um, 
and I took the paperwork to the process server and hoped that we could get him served before he made bail. And thankfully, we got it in on time before he made bail, and so he was wow. actually served in jail, which makes me very happy. <laughs> I love That's that. Awesome. That's my favorite part. <laughs> That's got to be that's got to be the worst news while already in jail. I mean like Right? I mean like you could you could like be hoping for your latest uh, money to come in so that you could buy soap and nachos. <laughs> Uh, and that not happen or you could like lose a pack of smokes to a guy or something getting served while in jail <laughs> That's just yeah. like the icing on the cake. You're like, yeah, I'm, you know. I love it. I love it. <laughs> I was so happy. That was my, that was my favorite part of the whole thing. So you may have picked up that Micah, our witness for this interview, recently got married to a man named Sean. What you might not know is that she's also a very skilled massage therapist. She's been certified since 2008. She's licensed to practice massage therapy in the state of Florida. She's insured. She's accredited by the Better Business Bureau, and she owns her own studio right in the heart of Pensacola. Whether you're needing a relaxing session or you're in need of an adjustment so you can get back out on the golf course, Micah has a range of styles and practices to suit your individual needs. With over 10 years experience working her magic right inside a professional chiropractic office, she's acquired tons of great reviews. She offers gift certificates and private scheduling on her website, massagebymica.com. If you're moved by her story and want to help her get her marriage off to a great start, set up your visit and be sure to let her know if you want her to include CBD oils, topical balms for pain relief, specific adjustments, deep tissue, cupping sessions, or whether or not you have tight musculature or trigger points for her to work on. Again, the best way to reach her is massagebymica.com. That link is also in the show notes. If you mention this podcast, you'll get $10 off your first visit. Do you enjoy my dreamy voice? Well, you're not alone. I've been doing voice and video work since my very first project way back in 2005 when I released my first multi-platform project with media recorded in 12 countries. Since then, I've gone on to be a travel show host, an audiobook narrator, a sound engineer, a podcast host, a documentary filmmaker, and even a university professor teaching at eight colleges in five countries. My team and I create professional quality audio and video for all sorts of projects and clients. So if you need multimedia for your business or a professional project, this could be a podcast, a commercial, a narration of your next book, anything media related. I've undoubtedly covered it, made it myself, and taught it to students all over the world. Send a list of your audiovisual needs to our producer, Vira at LegallyInsaneFilms.com for emails in the description, or you can find us at LegallyInsaneFilms.com slash contact. I've had a lot of wonderful feedback about this case already in its early season. As a result of that feedback, I've decided that I'll also be releasing an audiobook about this case that will be called The Cabinet Con. And, you know, depending on where this case leads, I may even release a second book that chases down all the leads I have on Michael McKay. Not sure what the title of that is. Maybe I'll leave it up to my audience. Who knows? It will be available on Audible and other uh, audiobook publications like all my other stuff. But not to worry, I will be giving out copies of this to all my fan club members at the investigator and commander levels. And I'll definitely be picking a few lucky, dedicated, legally insane sleuths and patrol level members to receive that as well. So keep an eye out for that to come out once I've completed interviews with everyone involved in the case. A quick word about our team. We need people. If you love our mission of exposing injustice and celebrating those fighting it, we'd love to bring you onto our team. We need social media masters to help us engage followers, marketing gurus to get the word out, and we definitely need web sleuths to help us crack cases and find info on VIX, witnesses, and perps. If you consider yourself to be sleuthy with a capital S and want to help us dig up dirt on the dirtiest dirt bags out there, or if you want to be an administrator on our brand new sleuthing groups, shoot an email to our producer, Vira at LegallyInsaneFilms.com or find us in the show notes. Now, back to the show. Okay, so so tell me about the, you got all these people together and you're in court. Tell me what that court scene is like. I mean, you described it to me. I, I don't want to influence how you're going to say it, but like, I was like, Hell yes. I kind of felt like uh, a drum beat from The Hobbit coming on as you were talking. So <laughs> don't, don't. Well, like, I'll have to rewind a little bit because actually we we got um, we actually had our court date for our civil case first. Oh, OK. But yeah, but, but that's that's first. with everyone or that's just with you, you and your husband? That's just with us. First. OK. Um, and actually, Robert went to, you know, 
when he was in jail when we got him served, that was on 914. He went back to jail um, one, two, three, four more times. Wow. Um, before he went in for good. <clears throat> so he went back to jail again for the last time on 116, 2020. Okay. But, um, so we got, um, we had the court date, and actually the judge issued a mediation where it wasn't really. It wasn't really guilty or non guilty not guilty. It was a mediation where Robert agreed to pay back all of the money. He said, Oh, yes. really? Yes. He said, Yes, I did it. I'll pay you back a hundred dollars a month until the debts pay off. And and you know, and actually the judge said, you know, if you get a judgment, um, it's just a judgment. It's it's up to us to collect. Or we just issue the judgment. Um And of but, course Robert knows that because he's probably got tons of those. Oh right. So um, <laughs> Sean, Sean did get um, two payments of $100, which his mother wrote in a check. Yeah, um, this is a little heartbreaking, too. I mean, I don't know if his mom's in on this, but, like, you were no. telling me a little bit about his mom. What's what's the story there? Um, You know, in court, at the very end, you know, they told us that she had dementia and she was, her health was failing. So I'm sure that, you know. She took advantage of her. She's just got, a, you know, a bad egg, you know. Right. So, I well, he took that. advantage of everybody else. Why not take advantage of his mother? Right, right. Um, so anyway, um, so that was that. We we figured we'd probably never see any any more of that. Um, so Robert went into jail for good on one sixteen twenty twenty, and that was because um, Robert actually had started working for a business called Car Bazaar, and he. Um, the owner went out of town and while the owner was out of town, people were coming in to pay their car payments and he was pocketing the money. <laughs> and he also, this is the crazy part. Not that this isn't crazy. He's a real gem, this guy. <laughs> so this is the crazy part. He took people's names that were clients or customers, took their names, sold cars on the lot to people on the internet like facebook and took the money so he pretended like he was somebody else wrote on the title as someone else sold the car as if he was someone else and then pocketed the money for those cars so in the state of florida is there not required to be a notary signature or stamp on these uh no i don't think so well, that's probably why it's required to be in other states. <laughs> Maybe. Thanks, Robert. You yeah. just made me spend $35 extra every time I buy a car in every other state. Right. right. <laughs> yeah, he sold cars off of their lot with someone else's name and then just took the money. Um, so that's the reason that he ended up in jail from basically 116-2020 to mm, now, you know. Okay. So just a couple of weeks ago. Um, so that was great. Um, that was great because he got, you know, grand theft and all kinds of stuff for, for that. Wow. Um, so then comes, you know, finally, um, you know, they gathered all these people around. They, they, they got a case together for all the people that had been scammed. Um, you know, 16 of us total. Um, so... That was great. And they had all of us, they, they, they kept us abreast of, of what was going on. And they said, you know, if you want to write a statement, you can write a statement and send it in before the, before the um, sentencing. They really didn't have a trial. Um, I guess he was going to admit what he did. And so it wasn't going to be a trial. It was just going to be a sentencing. So we went and um, Sean decided not to go. Um, but they said, if you, want to, if you want to talk, you can talk. They told us, they said, meet down in the state attorney's office when you come. No, no. So let me pause for a second. Yes. Why did Sean not want you to go? Because it wouldn't matter? Or what's the story there? He didn't want to go. <clears throat> I wanted to go. Um, I wanted to, I wanted to see it to the end. Yeah, right. <clears throat> because I, I felt like this is the end. I mean, this is what I've been waiting for. Well, yeah. you got the ball rolling. So, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I've been waiting for this thing. He didn't want to because he 
didn't want to be angry all over again. He wanted this to be done. He wanted closure. He felt like he didn't want this to, you know, rule his life anymore, you know, rule his thoughts. He just, he was so angry about it. He just wanted it to be over. Um, so I said, well, I'll, I'll go for you. <laughs> you know, I can't wait. I'll take a picture of this mother in cuffs. <laughs> right? <laughs> I can't wait. <laughs> I've been waiting for this for years. Yeah, yeah. I'm kind of, I'm kind of surprised. Like, uh, I, and I know guys think differently than girls. Like, it, it you know, it's a, it's different. It's different. Like, you know, when you get, when, when you get, I'll say, vengeance against someone for something they did wrong. That's one thing. But when you didn't do anything wrong and you weren't involved in some vitriol, like some vitriolic exchange. And you're a, you're an actual legitimate target. Uh-huh. I don't know. I don't know too many guys uh, that I you know, you know. Everybody's different, of course. And I'm not passing any judgment, but like, man, I would have wanted to see that. I I would have taken off work. I'd have been like, yep, there's something I got to do. So like, yeah. I'd have... yeah, but you know what? It was lingering, and it was such a headache for so many years. So I I could see why he's just like done with it. Like, all right, you're going to jail. Good. Yeah. 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 I'd have thrown I'd, something at him probably if I was yeah. <laughs> if I was Sean. <laughs> I was afraid he would maybe I don't I don't think launch across the dais and murder him, <laughs> strangle him to death right there, beat him to death. I like if I was the judge, I'd be like, Bailiff, just give him ten more seconds. Yeah. 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 Keep keep beating, Sean. Okay, pull him off. All right, we're good. Th- right. Throw him in jail. Yeah. A throw loaded him in room for five minutes with this guy. <laughs> yeah. 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 But, oh, okay, um, so so describe the, the courtroom scene there. Okay, so we all go um, we all go into the courtroom and we're all on the back row. And when he we, we're all sitting on the back row. When he walks in, um, <laughs> he walks in with this with a swagger, and he's like kind of strutting. Is he is he in. is he pimp limping? Just tell me he's pimp limping. <laughs> really. <laughs> Uh, he's probably got his homies there. He's probably got to like give a show. Uh, he's got to keep his chin up. <laughs> Swagger and and he's got this smirk on his face. And in my head, I said to myself, "What a smug asshole!" And Piece the lady shit. beside me, she said, "Smug bastard." <laughs> and then the guy beside her, I hear him say, "Look at that smug." I mean, all you can hear is people saying smug, smug. <laughs> so, so like, I, exactly it. I was kind of right when I said that there were drums from The Hobbit, only it led up to the desolation of smug. Okay, right. <laughs> yeah. I'm hoping I'm hoping my nerd friends in the audience actually get that one. <laughs> I got it. I got it. Yeah. It was, I mean, my, my stomach kind of did a flip when I saw him because I don't know why I don't know why but but it did and and I I don't know he just he had this look on his face like like he was not gonna like nothing was gonna happen to him yeah well he he, uh, he admitted he didn't even take a plea deal like nobody it kind of it's surprising to me that he went this far with this scam and 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 clearly he and other co-conspirators were talking about what would happen when and how you know uh maybe they didn't go through like what the <laughs> sentencing process would be i mean maybe they're not that actually what do you call it coordinated so you know, so he, so he comes in he's got a smug look on his face and the state attorney you know, asks who all is here that has been, you know, affected by Robert Stoll. And everybody on the back row stands up and it is powerful. I mean, it's powerful. And, um, you know, there's, there's people, there's elderly people there. There's a lady there that's in her eighties and her husband's 95 years old. Oh my God. And, you know, they're, they're getting up with canes. Um, you know, there's there's several people over 60 years old. What was was there a reaction from the judge? Um, did, did, did they take notice? 
she she's pretty tough so <sighs> well I don't know I mean you don't I, you don't know what someone's thinking but was there a visual yeah. response like did she even acknowledge that that was the case or was she just like staring down at her notebook or whatever um you know I I, I feel like I feel like she she did uh I feel like she did hear she did hear everybody you know that she she really was listening and she she really was taking notice of, of everybody because people of, of the 16 um of all the 16 people that were in the case 11 people showed up um of the 11 people that showed up seven of us got up to talk um and at first we weren't really planning on it but in the state attorney's office the more we talked to each other the more we thought maybe we would share our stories with each other in front of the judge because why not? I mean, well, yeah, I mean, that, go, that, right. that takes precedent. Well, not precedence necessarily, but it takes into the judge needs to take into account those types of things when sentencing. And I'm not sure because I haven't done any investigation as to the maximum penalties uh -huh. for a crime like this, but I, it's gotta be, he's gotta be serving the maximum, right? I mean, I think there's some no. stipulation in Florida about you can serve 85% of something, but, but did the judge at least give him a sentence of the maximum allowable penalty? No, she did not. And, <clears throat> and the reason why she didn't is because if they sentenced him to the maximum, he would not have had to pay restitution to anybody. And honestly, the people that were there said they didn't care if they got dime back they didn't care hmm. all of us wanted him to just be put away right. right but the state attorney basically said that she I, I think maybe she spoke for some of us but nobody there really cared about the money um but she said that she thought that that we wanted um you know an extreme uh sentencing but we also wanted restitution as well so that there was a balance you know but we also want to make sure that he had enough time in jail to where he didn't do this to anybody else for a long time so um you know we all you know so like i said seven of us got up there to talk uh one of the ladies got up there and, and didn't want to cry and she got up there and ended up crying and and uh, angry at herself but i said you know i told her i said you know what's important for people to understand how you feel. And, you know, if, if that means that you are emotional, then that's how you feel. And, and well, who wouldn't important. be, who wouldn't they be know. emotional? I don't care if you're the most hardened uh, at an MMA boxer, uh, in the, in the field, like you're going to get up there. It's going to be emotional. However, you express that emotion is different uh, and everybody does that differently, but yeah, I mean th this ha this this person took all these people. I, I you know I'm trying to put myself in that courtroom when you talk, and I did this the first time, and I was like, man, that's got to be at least for the people that went there that showed up at least a little bit. Uh, you know, they had to have a little bit of finality, a little bit of closure. Uh, they know they're probably not going to get their money back, but you know, money is in immaterial when you consider how many other people he did this to and got away with and how many people he would have gotten uh right. it, you know it's not just taking somebody's money it's not, you know <clears throat> when you have the money to pay for cabinets i don't think most people just have a whole bunch of money sitting around they're just considering redoing their kitchen for mm -hmm. right but that it, it does not matter because these people are elderly i mean like who knows what these people's stories are i mean this 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 right. elderly lady that was there maybe she bought this thing for like one of her kids like maybe you yeah, maybe she paid for like one of her kids to have uh their their place redone or something as a wedding gift or, i mean like somebody some people take like home improvement loans like all kinds of stuff to, yeah. to upgrade their house and you don't know how how you damage them the woman who um broke down and crying she had refinanced her house to pay for this wow and didn't that was it so she she she, she not only paid this guy she's got to pay tax and interest right. on what she right. paid out to this guy 
that's, right. that's... And, and now she said she had <laughs> one cabinet sitting on her floor and it's been there for two years and that's all she had that's it and so what was i'm sorry what was the the maximum sentence that so he could have gotten sentence, the maximum sentence was 40 years and what did he get 40 he got, years 40 years i'm sorry but that's that's more than murder like that yeah, yeah. that immediately pisses yeah. me off <laughs> Well, but he got a racketeering charge, which is a hard charge to get because you have to prove that this was this was a organized attempt to defraud multiple people, and racketeering is a is a broad um, it's a broad well, charge. Well, it's yeah, it's what they it's what they bring against organized crime units, like yeah. organized crime gangs. Uh, right, it's, it's a really hard charge to so it's a it's a it's a major, um, you know. Well, this right. guy, this guy's got a history of stuff. I mean, I'm looking at his right. at, at the list of cases. It just goes on and on and on. Mm-hmm. I mean, <laughs> from 2018 the all the way back to 97. I think I've got I've got oh, yeah. stuff on this guy. 97. That means like that's the year that this guy and I both graduated high school. Mm-hmm. This guy has been in and out of court. So 97, 98, 2001, 2, 7, 8, 9, 2010, 12, 13, 2014, 2018, 19, and then finally, <laughs> finally, uh, I think that might have been yours. Might might have been a been your No, that's just actually that's South Carolina. So we got I don't know what I don't know what TR is. We got Michigan. We got Oh wait, you know what this is? I'm reading this wrong. This is traffic. Uh, this is a couple of uh, I don't know what CT. You know, is, if you look at the 40 years <clears throat> and consider how many people he's he's affected and how many people he's damaged, and everybody gets what two years of that time. Well, uh, yeah. Look at look at this. There's so you know? so yeah. You, you actually you brought out a good point. 97 to 07 is 10 years. To 2017 is 20 years. He, the last case that you brought. All this happened in 2019, or did it spill over into 2020? It actually, oh, so the state attorney basically said, um, because his, you know, the defense had no, they had no defense. Um, basically, they said, oh, he got in over his head. He admits what he did was wrong. He wants to be able to repay them. Um, they really wanted to keep him out of jail. They said he needs to be able to work to pay this off. That's what they wanted. They said less jail time, more work time, so he can repay all these poor people that he did this to. Work where? All he's been doing is scamming. What kind of job is he going to get that he's going to be able to pay thousands of dollars yeah. back to people? Yeah, and again, this is more than two That's decades. Ridiculous. More than two decades. How does someone? That's ridiculous. Let how does someone come up on that years. on that defense and like say, "Oh yeah, no, we're good now. This is the one that teaches me." Right. <laughs> So the state attorney basically said, so, you know, you say that you got in over your head and you bit off more than you could chew, but you started doing this in 2017 with flawless flooring, and then you opened up discount cabinets, and you still had flawless flooring opened, yet you started scamming people. You had your first case open up with flawless flooring, and then you start scamming people with discount cabinets, so you weren't in over your head when you started scamming people with flawless flooring because you just started that business so you didn't buy off more than you could chew then right you know yeah. so you know that's not that's not an excuse yeah so but no. but 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 she got the she got the conviction she got the restitution she got i mean it was it was as far as i can tell a slam dunk. I mean, like, there's, there's yep. no I, putting this guy away for forty years. I, that's crazy. I, you know, I don't even know what to say about that because, you know, serial killers don't get forty years. They get like consecutive yep. life sentences for their victims. But what right. if they've only, you know, killed a couple and they and they had good behavior? You know, like so that. He ended up getting ten years. Yeah. Okay. And then twenty years um, probation with. <laughs> Um, you know, having to pay restitution and um, he can't have his own business after that. He can't, he has to have a job. Oh, wow. They're, they're, barring, they're barring him from opening up his own LLC? 
that's what she said. She uh, said he can't work for himself. Interesting. That's not going to stop him. He'll put that in somebody else's name. This guy knows nothing, but that's what to do. Like, he can't be honest about anything. I mean, you'd think the first time he gets in trouble and he has to shut his doors at one place, he might, you know, back up and say, okay, this is uh-huh. this is out of hand. This got a little crazy. But he just keeps going and going. He doesn't even care. Yeah. I think that's all he really knows. I'm yeah. not mad about the 40 years, to be quite honest with you. <laughs> so, because so many people, it involved, it, 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 you know, affected so many people yeah yeah so sean will get after you know 10 years of actually it'll be really eight years because he got 565 days credit for being in jail um sean will get like 33 dollars for 20 years 33 dollars a month for 20 years (laughs) so is that what everybody gets 33 dollars um depending on how much money you know he they he took from him them. And he was um, one of the the higher end, right? Mm-hmm. There were a couple people that had like twelve thousand. Wow! Wow! A little bit more. So, mm-hmm. wow! Yeah. That's I crazy. don't know how they expect this guy to pay that restitution. To be quite honest with you, they said if he ends up in a construction type job and like a labor type job that he would be able to afford around 500 ish a month, which would be able to pay, you know, all these people that amount per month, which isn't, it's, you know, it's beans. It's yeah. Right. Well, because who hires convicts? <laughs> well, yeah. Yeah. Well, let's, let's chase this one down to rabbit hole too. I mean, like if, and, and this is a big if this guy doesn't just move to another state, right? I mean, Pensacola is pretty close to Georgia and Mississippi and, and South Carolina. Right. Let's just assume that he doesn't move somewhere else and 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 scrap this whole restitution. Uh, all he has to do is not break the law to to get out of this, uh, you know, supposed war. I mean, like twenty years of um, probation. I mean, that's the, the, the payment portion of that is civil, right? I mean, like, they can't enforce. He could be he could be in violation no. of a court order, but he wouldn't be criminal if he didn't pay these guys, right? I mean, he could, like, literally just yeah, move to California. It goes, it goes through the court system. So it goes directly to the court system, and he has a lien on some stuff, I guess. So um, does the probation also prevent him from leaving the state? Um, That I don't know. I don't know about that. Because what's to say he won't leave the state? Yeah, I don't know. I'm not sure. Yeah, well, I'd like to, that's that's one of the questions I'll ask the uh, the prosecutor when I call her. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, so uh, do you have time to talk about McKay and his role and his upcoming stuff? Sure. Okay, so let's move on to so we got we got our lock. This guy's in jail. Uh, you know, there's a couple things that his, his wife or girlfriend, you know, tried to like lie to the court about, and then, um, tell, tell us a little bit about how she tried to get him out on bond and then she changed her tune later, but then move, move into Michael McKay. Let's hear about him. Okay. So his girlfriend, uh, Robert's girlfriend, Angela Bott, um, had messaged the court and said, you know, he really needs to be out, um, because you know our family needs him, and um, he's a he's a good man, and he has you know he would never have done this. Um, he needs to be with his family. I I don't know what to do without him. There's a lot of stuff going on, and and I really need him here with me. And um, and they were living in that trailer with him. No, she was actually living in a different place. In a oh man, in a in a bad neighborhood as well. So he wasn't taking care of his family at all. With this He wasn't that great of a provider, I guess. Oh, no. I mean... That they needed him so desperately. He wasn't taking care of her either, so... <laughs> um, so then, um, at the sentencing, she had written a letter you know, basically saying, um, you know, that he was sorry for what he had done, and he was still a good man, and still a good father, and... Um, uh, but he he would be best at home, 
and able to work and pay off the people that he had done wrong. And he, you know, he, he needs to be around his children and his um, ailing mother. She has dementia and she's very sick. And um, so she had changed her tune a little bit and uh, I guess now admitted that he had done these things. So, you know, whether or not she knew that he had really been involved in this, I mean, I can't, um, I like to see the good in people. I can't imagine that she would not wonder where all this money was going. Um, I'd kind of, I'm kind of curious as to what he did with $6,400 of yours and like 12 grand of several other people's money. Uh, and, and I mean, I think the most of it went to Michael. I think Michael gave him a small, small percentage. Hmm. I don't know. I don't know. It was enough to keep him working. That's it for this episode. For this week's vote, I'd like you guys to head over to my Twitter account at Kyle O'Donnell and vote for whether or not you want me to interview Robert Stoll, who's currently in jail. If you don't care what he has to say or you just want me to focus on the victims, vote no. But if you want to see if he talks and maybe find out if he feels bad or had accomplices or whatever, vote yes. Now, I can't guarantee he'll talk or that his warden will even approve my request, but if you vote yes, at least I'll give it a try. And this vote, by the way, is a perk of being a member of the fan club. So donate five bucks to the cause and we'll keep doing good things for good people. While we may have reached the end of this episode, the next one is a heartwarming story about B, a disabled veteran and school teacher in Pensacola who had her kitchen destroyed by Robert Stoll. You'll want to stick around for that episode, which I'm calling B is for Brave. Well, now, when some of the victims, I don't know who, but some of them said that he, when he was talking about this, what he's telling Jones, that he would go work for his brother, um, they told me that he does the same kind of stuff. And so I was like, wow, so just let him out of jail. I mean, he, I really believe that he thought he was going to get out. He really did. Um, was he Was he shocked just, at the verdict? I, he... Um, so he was, he, his back to, was to us, yeah. right? And we were all watching him. So as soon as he said something, he just kind of like straightened up a little bit, like, holy crap, <laughs> I've been caught. <laughs> you know, it was that kind of reaction. Right. I don't think he expected to do time. The vote is up on Twitter this week. So head over there and tell me what you want. Small Town Justice is always looking for good people and great stories. Our mission is to expose injustice and celebrate those fighting it. If you have a story that fits that criteria, email it to thejusticepod at gmail.com. If you haven't already done so, subscribe to the YouTube channel, where every once in a while, a free bonus outtake or extended cut of our interviews might just slip by. You never know. That channel is youtube.com slash Kyle O'Donnell. It does seem a bit redundant to say this, but if you're hearing impaired, you can also watch these episodes on YouTube and turn on the closed captions. Small Town Justice is a production of Legally Insane Films, LLC. All rights are reserved. And you know who I'm talking to. I'm talking to you. You, right there. Until next time, go legal, but don't go insane.